Thank you very much, guys. This is Pro Graphics once again. And today, this one is a very quick one. But please, let's take note of this one. You must do this before you start with any retouching that you want to do in Photoshop. I'm repeating it again. You must make sure you have put these settings in place before you start with any retouching in Photoshop. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, try your best to subscribe to my channel. Remember, it's Pro Graphics. It's Pro Graphics. And guys, let's begin with today's tutorial. Now, a lot of retouchers do complain. Though sometimes this type of screens that we use is also very important, but most of the times a lot of retouchers do complain that after they have edited their images and they send it to other devices like their phones or their tablet or the social media, they can see that the colors that they used in retouching has shifted to different colors. Maybe the shadows and everything has changed. Guys, this is very, very important. The screens are also the screens also plays important role when it comes to color shift. But this time around, I want us to look at the settings. Now, when you look at this particular image, the colors that you're having over here, if we start editing with these colors and we have exported what embedded the color, whatever, it will definitely change. Because one thing is that most of the devices that we use, that's the phones, uses the uh, the AMOLED screen, some of them uses Whole different types of screen so we basically when you want to export it we come to file then you go to export then you go to export as then we convert to um, uh, the embedded color then convert to srgb and i'll talk about that one now even look at this one when i went to convert to srgb this is telling you that this is the image that you will get after you have um exported your your, your image now look at the image that you have whenever here, and it will be the end product so that means that there is a problem over here that we must fix so guys follow me to the end of this tutorial don't skip this tutorial okay so the first thing that you must do is whenever you bring a picture into um, your Photoshop working space you see this ones over here now click on this arrow for you to know the color profile i'm repeating again the color profile that you are dealing with so you see document size document measurement you see scratch size you see a, lo a lot of stuff over here. so you see document profile click on the document profile now you can see that you're having these are some of the profiles i have on my machine forage forage there is a forage for uh, forgra forgra 27 yeah good so if i'm using this color profile in editing i'm not getting the correct profile guys the recommended color profile i can tell you to use under the circumstances is adobe rgb adobe rgb so after you have done that if you want to convert it to srgb you can do that and if you want to embed that one too you can use it depending on what you are going to use it for i'm not going to i'm not going deeper to explain technically of those color profiles but i'm telling you what you are supposed to do under the circumstances so that you get a quality image after retouching so let's start you go to edit over here then come over here you see color settings please very important color settings now go we'll look at the rgb that we have over here you can see rgb rgb then you see wsc rgb no so come over here but let me come to the settings over here we have other settings so it should be uncustomized then you come over here then you look for adobe rgb this one adobe rgb 1998 click on that one guys whilst you are doing this just look at the image there will be a shift in the image that we are dealing with now for us to know when and where so that we can't forget the color profile that we are dealing with anytime you draw a picture into our photoshop either your raw or jpeg it should give us a notification so that we know that we, we know the particular color profile you are working in so profile mismatches so after you have set whatever you have set if you are bringing in a picture and the color profile doesn't match with the profile that you have set embedded in your photoshop it will give you a problem so it will ask you so click on ask when opening ask when even pasting so for instance i can copy the image from somewhere and paste on another image and it should ask me the color profile so that i can work within the color profile then 
ask when opening that is missing profile so if that particular profile um, uh, 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 file is not on your machine it should give you a prompt so sometimes you can be working with an image and when you look at the image profile here, you see on tag image something something i forget but something something on tag image profile i think so so after you are done with that you click on this one after you are done with that you see preserved embedded profile so let's preserve it let's leave these ones as it is you can also convert to rgb but we want to preserve this and embed this color profile so click ok now after you have clicked ok come back to your edit then come back to assigned profile now this assigned profile look at it very well in assign means that we are we are giving a command that any picture that comes onto your working space must use this particular color profile that's why you can see coated forage uh, for gray for gray, say for gray yeah for gray 27 so you can see the same color profile over here come over here and come and change it remember we have changed our color profile to adobe but still nothing happened to the image over here so let's go to let's set for a color profile that will match what we are doing now over here when you click on this color profile so you can see adobe over here so look at it when i click over here you can see that it is changing so just imagine you are working with some of these color profiles okay so you come over here working with smyk color profile when you click over here you don't see adobe color profile don't uh, don't color manage this document so what you are going to do is you leave it over here and click ok then i'll show you something don't worry you come back come back to edit again then come back to convert color profile now this convert color profile you click over here and whenever you are converting the color profile what should it convert to working rgb to adobe rgb so when you come over here you choose your color profile remember we are not working with cmyk we are working with this so we just click ok and guys let's duplicate our image again and when you look at this image still the color profile that we are working on over here is rgb 98 so you can see that over here now let's come over here view guys follow me very well then let's come to proof setup now when you come to the proof setup you can see that you are working within cmyk and that is not what you are working on you are working on rgb rgb so you move straight to monitor rgb when you move to monitor rgb that means that the colors over here has actually changed so let's see it's in color then let's come to our edit again come to color settings then you can see rgb over here you can see so let's click let's come to edit again this is where you assign so changing the document profile has affected the appearance of the layer continue with the color profile okay so over here you can see that since you have assigned the color profile you can see here has changed to working rgb adobe profile at first it was over here and we don't like that one we want this one remember when it started we came to don't match uh, 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 don't color manage this um, document now you can see that we are working with rgb which is adobe rgb 98 so you click on ok then guys your image is set for editing so we just come over here because there are a lot of um let's come to our filter camera roll because there are a lot of shadows in this image and let's see now let's go to automatic for the moment for tutorial sake then let's bring this one down a little bit okay let's click okay 
now let's go to export and look at something so export export as so let's allow it to do its own thing guys now look at it over here when you look at the first one that we did and the, and this one that we are having over here you can see that there's a far difference between the two now you can see that what you are seeing over here is the same thing that you are seeing over here though you have converted to srgb srgb now the difference between the adobe rgb and the srgb is is having the same color range but the srgb is a little bit narrow narrow than the adobe rgb that means that the adobe rgb is a little bit ahead of the srgb now if you don't want to convert it to srgb and you want to use the same adobe color profile you just click on this one convert to srgb we take it out and let's see what comes so right now you have embedded the color profile that we have over here now when you look at the image where you can see there have been a little shift because it wants this particular one so this particular embedded color profile so when you convert it to the srgb you also i hope you can see that it has just popped up you can see that so guys that is the best way to set your screen for retouching or else after we are finished you see that we have done we have spent time in retouching but the outcome is poor it's not because you didn't do the professional job it's just because of the color profile the color assignment and all of all other stuffs that is involved so guys if you have found this video to be helpful please try your best to subscribe to my channel and recommend my my channel to your your other friends so that they can also come on this platform to learn thank you very much and have a blessed day and remember it's pro graphics bye bye